Yo, what's up, guys? Master Twenty Ten here, and I'm a bit sorry I forgot. I com I've completely forgot about Death Battle. I have got a good excuse for that. It's called Mass Effect Andromeda. And enough said. If you see my reaction to those trailers, you know how excited I am about that. But anyway, regardless, we're back with the uh, Venom vs. Bane. Never thought about. That. I've never thought about those two before. This should be interesting. You ready? Let's do this. Every champion of justice inspires others, whether they mean to or not. And sometimes that inspiration creates your worst nightmare. Venom, the ultimate antithesis to Spider-Man. And Bane, the burly genius who broke the bat. He's <laughs> whiz and I'm boomstick. That was a good and scene in the movie. it's our job to analyze their weapons, armor, and skills to find out who would win The Bane when he breaks. That one's back in the Christian Bale one. The word symbiosis refers to two organisms living in beneficial harmony, such as when two beings bond over an obsessive, psychotic desire to kill Spider-Man. Eddie Brock was an up-and-coming journalist on the brink of national success when life decided to just shit all over him. One day, Eddie published okay. an article incriminating a man he thought was a serial killer. However, that very same day, Spider-Man caught the real killer, publicly shaming Eddie. As a result, Eddie's company fired him, his father disowned him, and his wife left him. Wow. So, he had cancer. Damn, wow. talk about a bad day. Understandably pretty upset about it, Eddie blamed Spider-Man for ruining his life. This led to his fateful meeting with a weird black gooey alien. Remember Gag from the 90s? It's just like that, except alive and... Evil. This was a symbiote from the planet Clintar, an alien species with one goal, to grow stronger by fusing with a living host. I know that sounds intimidating and almost parasitic, but the Clintar people are naturally a peaceful race. Huh. However, they often inherit their host's traits and personality. This symbiote in particular had previously bonded with a violent alien bent on genocide and a costume superhero everybody knows as... Deadpool. Oh my Crazy god, what the hell? Dick? Oh, there's no way this is <laughs> after That's that. That's cool. It wasn't. Afterward, it bonded with Spider-Man, who experienced this rage and lunacy firsthand. Horrified by this, Spider-Man eventually discarded the symbiote. Unaware, the alien had determined Spidey was its ideal host and became obsessed with him. Much like Bar Trash Cindy, <laughs> that sometimes you ah, can funny episode of South really Park. want to see her again. So what do you get when you combine an angry man and a black goo monster both hatefully obsessed with the same guy? Most just call him Venom. Did you know, Eddie came up with the name Venom because he felt he was spewing Venom from the tabloids he worked at. Seriously? Wow. Uh, I give that origin a 3 out of 10. Thank God the name's cool at least. Oh, I'll play that game. Venom's abilities are even cooler. He's insanely strong, ridiculously agile, and has a fast-paced healing factor. He can power through bullets with no problem at all. Plus, the symbiote carries some of the abilities of its previous owners, including Spidey. That means he can climb on walls and shoot webbing strong enough that Spidey himself can't break through. Technically speaking, Venom simply reproduces the webbing effects via one of his more useful powers, shape-shifting. This symbiote can act as a liquid, allowing it to increase Venom's size for intimidation, cool. or even mimic Eddie's everyday clothing for discretion. Not to mention, Venom can That's morph into a wingsuit to glide through the air, isolate and purge toxins from its host's body, straight up turn invisible, what? or even just sprout spikes for simple stabbing weapons. With these abilities That's seemingly cool. I didn't know Venom could do that stuff. twisted imagination, Venom has tangled with many of his world's heavy hitters. He's defeated Spider-Man without having a host, resisted Ghost Rider's penance stare, oh. and shaken off the Hulk's infamous thunderclap. That's right, he's even taken blows from the likes of the Juggernaut and the Hulk. Whoa. Even if Venom does get injured, the symbiote can rapidly heal its host. From broken bones, impalement through the chest, or even blasts from an anti-tank rocket. He's also so speedy that he can catch up to bullets in mid-flight. But if he doesn't feel like it, he'll just take the shot and spit it back with deadly force. He's strong enough to bust down metal doors with his fists, tear apart large military trucks, or throw cars several blocks away. I mean, part of that's gotta be Brock. Have you seen how much that dude can lift? Most impressively, Venom once held up a giant carnival ride similar to a Ferris wheel, even after getting struck by one of his worst weaknesses. A sound gun. A sound gun? 
That's pretty loud. Oh yeah, he doesn't like sound, does he? I can just beat him if I scream really loud? With enough sound or literal firepower, yes, you could force the symbiote to expose the vulnerable host underneath. Though I should note that repeated exposure has helped Venom build up some tolerance. Also, while the symbiote is highly versatile, Venom is not exactly a strategist. Unsurprising given his apparent insanity. I like being bad. It makes me happy. The symbiote also requires a diet containing the chemical phenethylamine. Pheno, what? You like, buy that at the store, or...? No, it's found in certain fungi, chocolate, and brain matter, which the symbiote greatly hungers for. Oh great, now it eats brains! God, wow. this guy is literally a living nightmare. Eddie, is that you? There's no more Eddie, and no more symbiote. Only... Venom! <laughs> In his personal mission to drive wow. crime from Gotham City, Batman has faced dozens of foes, each more vile and cunning than the last. But none challenged his sheer oh, will that's a good game. than the monstrous man called Bane. Bane's life was screwed from the start. He was born into prison and made to carry out his dead dad's life sentence. Talk about carrying the sins of your father. I mean, who puts a baby in jail? Couldn't it just, like, crawl through the bars? Did they make a baby jail? I have so many questions. The child spent his dawning years in captivity, forced to fend for himself against a cruel and unforgiving world. Then one day, a fateful accident caused something to snap inside him. I'm guessing his neck. No, well, it should have. Instead, the boy slipped into a coma where he saw a vision of his future self. A man standing above all other men. Future self told him he would be second to none so long as he could conquer the power of fear, which is apparently shaped like a bat. Huh, would you look at that? What are the odds? When the child awoke, he began his journey to conquer that fear through the power of bloody murder. Yep. Hell yeah. That's also when the prison warden called him a Bane to everything holy. And that's why he's named Bane. Ugh, two out of ten. Anyway, it yeah, that's not very good argument for the name, is it? Got wind of a certain bat ruling Gotham City by fear. But he got to work trying to become the ridiculously jacked guy he saw in his dream, so he could take down Batman once and for all. As he grew up, Bane entered an intense daily workout regimen. Not just of his body, but his mind as well. He educated himself in ten languages, escapology, combat tactics, and several martial arts, including a few he created himself. Bane pretty is much became a legend across the prison. So yeah. to remind everybody who was in charge, the warden decided to make an example of him. See, this place wasn't just a prison. The army of Never Santa Cruzco was conducting tests on human subjects with an experimental formula called Venom. Because super soldier formulas are all the rage. The procedure had killed every previous test subject, but Bane proved hardier than expected. And after he had a taste, Bane wanted Venom for himself. So he faked his own death, punched a few sharks to death, and liberated the whole prison single-handed. The inmates joined his cause, and he took his new super soldier serum to Gotham City. Using a special apparatus on his wrist, Bane can administer a dosage of venom directly into his brain at will. Doing so dramatically increases his muscle mass, turning him into one of Gotham City's most ferocious physical threats. That's a good game also. He's destroyed the Batmobile with his bare hands, jumped off skyscrapers without injury, and lifted loaded armored trucks which weigh tens of thousands of pounds. And then there's the feat he's most famous for, breaking the back of Batman. Ugh. But Bane didn't just break bone, he literally put poor Batman into a coma. Well, years later, Batman did get his revenge. After swapping powers with Superman, what? he paid Bane a visit and broke his everything. And somehow, this didn't kill him. He is one tough son of a bitch, and if he needs it, Bane can crank up his flow of venom for more strength and faster healing. But when he first tried this, it came at a cost. Turns out, an overdose of venom can temporarily deteriorate one's mind, turning Bane into a mindless, muscle-bound beast. Ah! And it's also surprisingly addictive, so eventually Bane swore off the stuff for some time. But this only let Bane prove that he is just as dangerous even without the performance-enhancing drug. He's been pelted by dozens of bricks at once and taken countless stabbings and bullets without even reacting. 
He once cauterized his own wound with a blowtorch and even got thrown hundreds of yards by a last woman and got right back up ready to fight. Shit. I love the juice Bane is strong enough to tear down a stone prison wall, casually rip off an armored guy's limbs, and take out dozens of members of the League of Assassins, solo. But if he really needs to, he can always fall off the wagon and get back on the venom. Bane's absurd power is matched only by his intelligent mind. He possesses a photographic memory, rivals Ra's al Ghul in chess, and deduced the identity of Batman in one year when nobody else could figure it out. Yeah, Bane's Damn. pretty ridiculous, but it's no secret that he's at his best when he's got that venom juice pumping through his veins. Luckily for him, he eventually developed a form of venom that didn't turn his brain into mush, and he then soon got addicted to that stuff all over again. Still, Bane has proven over and over again that with or without venom, anyone who crosses him will beg for mercy and receive none. We fought before I broke the bat. Today, I break the man. All right, the combatants are set. Let's end this debate once and for all. But all this strength talk has reminded me I gotta bulk up. And the best way to do it is with a delicious home-cooked meal. Okay, wait. Skip. Okay, I got him. Hmm. I'm going with Venom. Step aside, Minos. Alright, oh, getting the Venom straight away. Something else. <laughs> You're mine. Let's do it. Oh, that's crazy. Fall back on cheap magic tricks, trying to disappear. Yet you don't know how to be uh. truly invisible. Oh. Yes. Yeah. Give me permission to die. Haha, <laughs> stole that from Batman. Yeah, the Arkham Dark Knight series, I mean. Just like all the others, broken. That way, come, Donna. Oh shit! Go 
Yeah, Venom! Called it! You! That can't taste good. Both fighters were intense <laughs> See Batman threats, though. but only one wielded the superior Venom. Venom had many advantages over Bane. Speed, durability, versatility, and even strength. Bane's peak strength was at most just enough to lift a 27-ton car. Meanwhile, Venom was strong enough to stop a falling carnival ride and hold it up by himself even while in a weakened state. Comparing it to similar carnival rides, my very conservative estimate would place this thing weighing around 200 tons. Way more impressive than anything Bane ever lifted. Of course, Bane was smarter. However, even if he had deduced Venom's key weaknesses to fire and sound, he wasn't really equipped to take advantage of them. As for speed, Venom could catch bullets. Even better, he could catch up to bullets in midair. He had to move over 1,500 miles per hour to do that. Ironically enough, almost twice the speed of sound. Surprisingly, their <laughs> ability levels were pretty even. Both have taken hits from Superman level beings and lived to fight another day. The big difference being Venom's healing factor was far superior. He could fight on par with Juggernaut, who can make 4.8 magnitude earthquakes with his bare hands. But it's not like Batman ever needed super strength to knock Bane out cold. In time, Venom's hmm. superior strength, speed, durability, and versatility simply overwhelmed Bane. Looks like Venom was the real Bane of this fight. Ah. The winner is Venom. Hey, stick around to find out who's coming up next on Death Battle. Alright, let's see who's next. Let's just zap. Okay. That was a good fight. Good fight. Right, it's been Maso2010. If you want to play anything or react to anything, let me put in the comments down below. Please like, subscribe, and see ya!